Thank you. Let me also join my colleagues, first in condemning the massive looting that witnessed yesterday, orchestrated by Mr. Odinga, the Lord of Violence, sponsored by his principal sponsor. Former President Uhuru Kenyatta. And I also want to confirm that indeed many leaders here and many others who are not here are under immense pressure from their constituents. Kenyans, peace loving Kenyans, asking the government if the government is not able to take care of the situation, pressuring leaders that the public be allowed protect their lives, their businesses, and their property. And as we commend the police for the very good work that they did yesterday, we want to ask them today that they must hold people to account for the anarchy yesterday, for the massive looting of property and destruction of property, and nobody should be a sacred cow. When his president said that the constitution is a constitution of the republic and everybody is under that constitution and the laws of the republic, including the president himself, Mr. Odinga and Mr. Kenyatta are not. They must submit themselves to the wind of our constitution and our laws and abide by them. And I want to encourage the Inspector General of Police, fear nobody. Don't just arrest the young boys and young girls who are being paid to demonstrate. If the bus stops at the door of Mr. Odinga, go for Mr. Odinga. If the bus stops at his sponsor's door, go for them. Failure to which, then you leave Kenyans to protect themselves and to protect their, their, their property. And we do not in any way desire that uh, at that, that time comes to pass in our life where Kenyans will take it upon themselves to protect themselves and their property. Aware that that is what Mr. Odinga and his sponsor want so that the country can degenerate into chaos. For Mr. Odinga to find an avenue swimming in the blood of innocent Kenyans to get an opportunity at another step of getting closer to had the time under the hands of Egypt. He had the means, he had the system, he always thought he had the deep state. But instead of using the deep state and the means and the system he had, to ensure that he campaigned and won over the hearts and the minds of Ken the Kenyan people, he spent his time in government, enabling, facilitating, and enjoying the loot that came out of the hands of the regime, especially in the last six, seven months of that regime. We also are aware their principal motivation in orchestrating this chaos is to intimidate government, to stall the investigations that they are aware are on point on the massive extrajudicial killings that are crimes against humanity. And we want to remind Mr. Kenyatta, it's barely six years or five years since he was acquitted of crimes against humanity by the ICC. The crimes perpetuated under his watch by DCI Kinoti and the SSU unit. I know it's a great motivation for him and his handshake partner to want to orchestrate chaos to preempt these investigations. <coughs> the massive looting of our economy through the Hong Kong saga, the road sector that we mentioned last week, the maize and fuel subsidies, the COVID-19 camps of billionaires, they know and they are aware that investigations are on high gear and therefore they want to preempt all these investigations. But as we have said, they will fail and the truth very soon shall be known on who are the beneficiaries of the telecom haste, the cancer COVID billionaires haste, or the road sector haste, 
where, as we mentioned last week, roads were being contracted. Foreign contractors were being contracted to build roads with no procurement being done. And at costs that you cannot imagine, that people can be contracted to build a gravel road at a price of 40 million shillings a kilometer with no due process. These are the things Mr. Odinga and Mr. Kenyatta are afraid of.